Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to show you how to reclassify spectral classes following an unsupervised classification algorithm. So essentially we did an unsupervised classification. Uh, we have a raster in which each pixel is assigned to a numeric class and we're going to rebin uh, some of those classes and group them together. So in this video we'll just start out what are spectral classes, set the stage a little bit, then I'll show you two tools, uh, raster values, unique value report that can assess the size of your classes. And then we'll use the recode tool to actually do the reclassification. If you want to just learn these tools, you can jump right to the second half of the video. So if you're in my class, you have just finished this classification effort. And it's worth considering when are we ready to move on to the post-classification smoothing stage, right? Because as we set, set out to combine classes now, we're acknowledging that we are, we've done the best job that we can actually creating and classifying the pixels, right? And so we don't want to start this stage until we're happy with our, our classification. So think, have you included all the data types that might give you leverage on this classification? Have you tried several different classification algorithms, supervised, unsupervised, and everything? Um, if you did supervised, do you have some unclassified pixels remaining? That's always a good sign that you didn't overclassify. So if you've done supervised classification and every pixel is classified, it means your accuracy may be pretty poor because you probably assigned some pixels into classes where they don't belong. Maybe you've done a visual comparison with some high resolution imagery like a, a streaming Google base map that to, to suggest and show that you've got the best possible accuracy. And hopefully you've done this with numerous classification outputs to assess which one is the best before you proceed with the post classification. And then of course, you've got to think about whether your objective warrants smoothing, right? Do you want to be combining classes? Do you want to be eliminating small clusters of pixels? Or do you want to, and essentially maybe losing information or uh, do you actually want to smooth and aggregate? And then finally, just one message is, um, don't forget to clean up the house. So usually after classification, your work folders are an absolute nightmare, right? You've tried all these different things, inputs, outputs, files everywhere with all different names. So go in and delete all those unused inputs and unused outputs. You will thank yourself when you go back to that folder later. Okay. so. Uh, in in, in sup unsupervised classification, right? Um, keep in mind what happens. You don't tell it the classes, okay? You just give the computer the image um, and it evaluates which pixels are similar to each other and groups them into classes based on their, their spectral similarity. And that's why we call these classes spectral classes, right? Because they don't necessarily have a specific or at least a predetermined physical outcome. They just look similar to the computer. So quite often what will happen is that you end up with a case where you have um, uh, a, a user class like water that actually has been split into two spectral classes, maybe you know turbid and clear water. They're both water, but they look different spectrally. So they ended up in two different spectral classes um, but, there, but now we're going to want to rebin them into a single user class to make our map, right? So that's the most common outcome. So for example, here's a previous classification I did where we classified a Yellowstone image with five classes, okay? So here's a lake, uh, dark blue is burned area. And then we reclassified it into only three, burned, unburned, and water, okay? so. Um, that's essentially what we're doing is downscaling. If you're using ArcMap, you can do this with the reclassify tool. If you're doing QGIS, you can do reclass or recode. All right, let's head right to it. So we've got our QGIS project open here. And what we're looking at here is uh, the outline of Yellowstone National Park. And this is a classified image. It was done using the ISO data algorithm, uh, a spectral angle classifier. And actually, if we want to find out how many classes exactly and how many pixels are in each class, we can actually use this tool 
raster layer unique values report. Okay, so here we'll put in the input, band one, and we can just leave everything to temporary. And we'll just run this. And what it does, it, it produces a report right here in the results viewer that shows us how many classes we have how many pixels are in each one, and what the total area is. This is pretty handy. OK, so now that we know that, we know we have these 12 classes, one thing that's helpful is to notice that um, the algorithm like doesn't number them in order. So we're missing 1, 2. We're missing 5, 6. And that's OK. Those classes probably just got deleted during the algorithm. OK, so now you have to spend some time with your image. And I've actually already spent a lot of time with this image trying to figure out what each numerical class corresponds to. Okay, and this is going to take you half an hour or so. But let's start with some of the most obvious examples. If we zoom in on Yellowstone Lake here, and I toggle my image on and off, and by the way, I've streamed a Google base map now. So I've got a Google satellite base map, which allows me to compare the high resolution data set. So we tool this on and off, and right away I can see that the lake is made up of two different uh, pixel values. It's made up of this blue one, which is 11. And so notice I'm using the information tool. And I have the raster highlighted over here to make sure it knows which one I want. So blue is 11. Green is 10. OK, so 10 and 11 are both water. All right, that's helpful. We can see red over here off the edge is number 12. So 12 is no data. Um, let's look for some others. OK, others that I'm well aware of are, uh, let's look at this dark blue. This dark blue, and here I'm going to actually, it's very important, here I'm going to bring in the original Landsat that this was classified from. So comparing it now to the original Landsat, contrast isn't very good, but you can see this is a burned area. Uh, that's our really, really our goal here is to classify burned areas. So you see that burned area is showing up in dark blue. That's class 7. Light blue is class 4. And let's, let's double check this, right? So this is class 7. This light blue color is class 4. And this purple is class 13. So I believe the purple that we're seeing in there is actually rock showing up within the burned area. And we can double check that by going to the high res image. And sure enough, you see there's these rocky exposures here that are corresponding to that purple color. So I won't beat this to death, but you get the idea. You've got to spend a lot of time with that. Once you've done that, you need to make a reclassification list. And so first, I made a list of which, which number corresponded to which user class. Um, and then I decided which ones I wanted to bin. So here, in the syntax here is numbers 3 to 3, assign them to 3. Numbers 4 to 7, those were all burned areas, assign them to 4. Uh, 10 and 11, which were water, assign those both to 10. 12 to 12, which was no data, assign to no data. Um, this was rocks, and then this actually is pretty cool. This was geysers, which I didn't show you. But OK, so I saved this as a text file and remembered where I saved it. And now I can go into QGIS, and we can search for the reclass tool. Actually, I think we use the recode tool, r.recode. And uh, we'll put in our classified image here. And then we need to specify this file containing the recode rules. And that's what I just showed you. OK, here's my text file that I'm going to use. I'll hit Open. And I'm going to just let this go to a temporary file. But of course, you can make it permanent if you want. Hit Run. And we've now generated a recoded raster. So let's zoom to the layer. And I'm going to turn off the one behind it. So a couple cool things here. You can see now. Oh, and so for some reason, it insists on you know displaying all these numbers in here. To get rid of those, go to Properties, Symbology, Unique Values, and just hit Classify. And that'll update only adding all the, the colors you need or that, are, that actually exist.
So notice we went from 12 classes down to six classes. So we combined spectral classes into user classes. And also notice that number 12, which had been our no data area around the fringe of the map, has now been assigned to proper no data and it's gone.